What's up? I'm back. In this segment, I'm going to talk a little bit about alchemy, but I keep getting this question. How do you know when you are reading a real alchemist book versus, oh, material? It could be book, video, versus material that has been um, generated or created by somebody who maybe has studied alchemy but not practiced it. Or, um, I don't like to say fake, but in alchemy, they have what they call puffers which are people who might be more chemists than alchemists, but in their minds, they either perceive themselves as alchemists or other people might perceive them as alchemists, but they call them puffers because it's really somebody who's more of a chemist, which is more like just understand the external part of it or understand the internal part of it. Even though both are not balanced where if you understand the internal part but not the external part, it's not really an alchemist either. In alchemy, you kind of have to know both. So it's a simple question. And the answer is not really as complicated as people think. Alchemy, it's a science. It gave birth to a lot of the sciences and spirituality that you see today, or directly tied into it. So in, in essence, it's kind of all of them. And what I mean by that is, if you're really reading a book or watching a video generated by, I'm going to say book because if it's a video, it might be a specific topic, which if it's a specific topic, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna really. Um, it doesn't have to cover what I'm about to say. But if it's a book on alchemy, it should cover this. It should be able to cross-reference different types of sciences because that's what alchemy is. Alchemy is a kind of a combination of psychology, physics, chemistry, um, metaphysics. A lot of the religions that were created today were created by alchemists, so they would probably cross-reference myth mythological stories from different cultures. Or at the same time, it's a healing system. And of course, it has a, a um, laboratory alchemy as well. So it should cover even minerals, metals, plants. And if it doesn't, and if the book itself doesn't cross reference all those things, or it, because in a sense, I could say, I could talk about minerals, plants, psychology, yoga, and because yoga should be covered too. And it all fit in together if you, if you have an alchemical umbrella. And if the book doesn't, it's probably written by a puffer, um, which would be somebody who might be more a chemist than alchemist, and they're looking at it for, for just a monotone of gold or something like that. Or even if it's somebody who's a spiritualist, and they tell you the physical doesn't matter. All, all those are signs that the actual material is not coming from an alchemist. I know, you know people want a more complicated answer than that, but it's really simple. Because I've read a lot of books on alchemy, and I could usually see it after the first few chapters. Shoot, I mean, sometimes you can see it in the first few pages, depending on how much alchemy you know. But there's no question, eventually, if you follow that blueprint, you will see it. You pick up the alchemist book that you have, and you'll be like, okay, does it kind of, especially if it's not, because if you're just talking about the history of alchemy, I, I mean, even then, you're still going to kind of, it's going to still cross reference or crisscross into different fields. But you might be able to get away with it. But if it's talking about the art itself, you have to cover psychology, you have to cover physics. You gotta cover biology. You gotta color astrology as well. To be honest, a lot of alchemy is astrology. I don't see how you can really write a book about that and not cover that. If you do, then chances are that book is not read by alchemists. So, hope this helps. Till next time, peace.